together. He's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chain. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. Oh. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. Our God who comes to save. Our God who comes to say is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God, our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop the Lord Almighty. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop? Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the church watching today 1 John chapter 4 starting at verse 15 this passage is all about God's love and ours it says if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God God lives in him and he in God and so we know and rely on the love God has for us God is love Amen. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. This is the love of Christ. This is the perfect love. If you've ever known love, 
Well, if you don't know God, you've never known love like God's. It is perfect, perfect love. And it is only in the sacrifice of Jesus that we can stand firm in this love. Stand firm in the love. This love that drives out all fear. That's the kind of love I need in my life. And that's the kind of love I'm sure you need in your life. Yeah. (laughs) So let's sing this next song together, church, as an affirmation, a declaration of that we will remain firm standing in God's love. tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. To leave my past behind I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in There's power, there's power that can break off every chain There's power that can empty out a grave There's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name Resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. There's power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand. us to be. And God, we just thank you for this amazing love that you offer us. 
We don't deserve it. But Lord, you offer it freely. And so right now we are positioning ourselves as individuals, as families and as your church, God, positioning ourselves in your love because we know that your perfect love, when we remain in you, we remain in love and that drives out all fear. Amen. 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 God is good. When difficult or bad things happen, where do you see God in it? Some will say, where is God? Is He real? Some will blame God asking, why did you send this? Some will say that it's the judgment of God and it's the consequence for us being bad people. I've heard these sorts of thoughts and questions sprouted around droughts and bushfires, earthquakes, diseases, and a whole lot of other bad circumstances that come our way. Even during COVID, people have said that this is the judgment of God. Often there are pockets of some Christians who try to make sense of these events by interpreting them as punishment. Admittedly, there are some Old Testament passages in the Bible that can be read with this sort of view. Even Courtney Kardashian posted a picture during this time of a page of the Bible with the circle around the verse saying, God would send famines and locusts, implying that God has sent this virus upon us to wake us up. But there's something about this view that doesn't quite sit right with me. It paints a picture of God using fear and punishment to get our attention. God is normally inviting and drawing us into a relationship with Him. When navigating these tricky topics, we must endeavour to see things through the lens of Jesus. Otherwise, we can easily get caught up and go off on other tangents or end up painting a picture of God that doesn't quite line up. After all, Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. I thought about the story of Jesus and his disciples who were walking along one day and came across a blind man. The disciples asked Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? This was the culture of the time any perceived defect was seen as a punishment of God. That person um, was then considered to be then less than or not worthy or an outcast. The thought goes like this, someone did something and this is a consequence. Maybe there is some secret sin of this guy. I mean, that's pretty unfair seeing it even says that he was born blind. Was he blind because he was going to do something wrong? Or was it his parents that committed some great crime or did something bad? It's easy to think this way in our cause and effect world. Consequences for your actions, crime and punishment. And it's such an interesting question that you wonder how is Jesus going to respond to this one? Well, he doesn't respond as they expect. He says, neither this man nor his parents sinned. To cause this. What a statement of freedom. He totally challenges this widely held view. It's like the he who has no sin cast the first stone kind of statement. The world is not black and white. It's not cut and dry. It's not so simple. I mean, I've been alive long enough to see that good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. And Jesus challenges these views. Who sinned that these happened? Well, Jesus basically says, it's the wrong question to be asking. Then he points us to a much deeper and much better question. What's God going to do with this situation? What's God going to do in this situation? Now that is the right question. As I said, the world is not so black and white. It's not so cut and dry. In fact, the world is broken. God doesn't cause these bad things to happen. 
but rather they are a result of our broken world. What we see here is that God takes our broken situations. He takes our blindness. He takes our setbacks. He takes our sucky situations and He creates something beautiful. He brings revelation. He brings transformation. Jesus goes on to heal this blind man. He takes a broken situation and brings healing and hope. In some situations, God does bring healing for people. But that's not the story for all. But God is at work nonetheless. Take natural disasters. Often it leads to a greater sense of community and generosity. People thinking beyond themselves. This is God at work among us. In other circumstances, people receive a, a peace and comfort that seems odd considering what they're facing. And at other times, these situations lead to a person giving their life to Jesus and He transforms them into a new person. Where there might have been hatred, there is love. Where there was judgment, there is acceptance. Where there was a cold heart, there is now warmth. God takes broken situations and brings beauty. My prayer is, just like the blind man had his eyes physically open, that God would open our eyes to see how he is working, even when we are facing difficult, even unprecedented times. So today I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. Firstly, get into the Gospels. Read or listen to these stories of Jesus. Soap them, learn from them, and let them soak into your spirit. And that will enable you to see life with a Jesus lens. Secondly, pray that God will open your eyes to see Him at work, to experience all the goodness He has for you, to see how He could bring transformation to your brokenness. And thirdly, when we face bad circumstances in our lives, ask that question, what is God, what is God doing here? What is He going to do in this what hope is he going to bring to this mess? When we face these times, the last thing we need is judgment. We don't need a picture of God distant, scolding and punishing us for the bad things we or some group of people have done. We need a picture of Jesus, our God, coming into our world, experiencing life as we know it, speaking life to the outcast, giving sight to the blind, we need the Jesus who takes the darkest, worst situation, the cruelest torture ever created, who went into the crucifixion and the cross, taking this emblem of darkness and transforming it into a symbol of freedom, hope and light. When difficult things or bad things happen, let us look to Jesus and just see what God will do.